Welcome to our lecture online and our next topic in physics. We're still doing mechanics, but now we're going to talk about relative velocity. I have a few videos lined up uh, on this topic. And so the first thing we're going to do is something very straightforward. Now this is not at relativistic speeds, meaning we're not going super fast, so the speed of light, this is classical mechanics. We're doing normal velocities. Here we have a car that's driving to the right at 20 meters per second. The driver opens up the window, sticks his arm out, and throws a baseball at 10 meters per second relative to the car. Then I have three observers here, A, B, and C. Observer A is just standing by the side of the road, not moving. Observer B is running at 5 meters per second towards the car. And then observer C is on a platform on the wheels that is moving to the right at 10 meters per second. And the person, observer C, is running at 5 meters per second relative to this car this way. Now, what do observers A, B, and C see as far as the speed of the ball? How fast is the ball moving relative to A, B, and C? Now, relative to A is fairly straightforward. That's going to be equal to the velocity of the car plus the velocity of the ball. And so this is going to be 20 meters per second plus 10 meters per second which is 30 meters per second. And that's pretty intuitive. We can kind of look at it and say, yeah, that makes sense. What about observer B, who's now running towards the ball? Now, intuitively, we can look at it and say, all right, that means that B is approaching the ball faster than A, so the ball should appear to be moving to B faster than to A. But B is moving to the left at 5 meters per second, and that means it's a minus 5 meters per second. So the best way to describe that in the form of a formula is to write that the, the velocity of the ball is going to be equal to V of the car plus V of the ball, and then minus V of observer B. Why we say minus? Well, it makes sense that if the observer is moving to the left at a negative 5 meters per second, if we subtract that, then we add that to the velocity of the ball, and that means that this will then be 30 meters per second plus 5 meters per second, and we'll get the right answer. All right, so this then becomes uh, 20 meters per second plus 10 meters per second. This gives us the velocity of the ball relative to the road or relative to a stationary observer, and that's going to be minus a minus 5 meters per second, which now will give us uh, 35 meters per second. So to observer B, the ball appears to be moving faster. What about observer C, who's running on a platform that's moving to the right at 10 meters per second? All right, that will then become <clears throat> V of the car plus V of the ball, which again gives us the velocity of the ball relative to the road or stationary observer, minus V of the ball plus V of the platform. Now notice that the platform is moving to the right, moving away from the ball, so the ball has a harder time catching up, so the ball will appear to be moving slower relative to C, and so therefore we subtract that velocity, and therefore we get a smaller velocity. So let's see what that ends up being. So this will be 20 meters per second plus 10 meters per second. Again, that would be the velocity of the ball relative to the road. Now we subtract from that velocity of, the, of ooh, I should say observer C, not B, because now we're working with a different observer, observer C. So that would be a minus 5 meters per second, because he's running to the left, and then plus 10 meters per second for the platform. Now you can see that minus 5 plus, plus 10 is a positive 5. We subtract the positive 5 from this, so we end up with 25 meters per second. And that's a pretty good way to figure out relative velocities. Uh, in our next example, we'll, or video, we'll see it another example that's a little bit more complicated but again using this principle right here it's fairly straightforward to get the right answer that's how you do that